Hi guys, it's River. Today we are going to make this hoodie for Monster High and Ever After High dolls. The pattern for this can be found in my Etsy shop, which I will link in the description below. For this project, you will need a needle and thread, pins, scissors, a rotary cutter and mat if you can find it to cut out the fabric pieces, fray check, tube turners if you can find them to turn the sleeves, stretchy fabric like jersey, cotton, knit, or spandex, size four zero snaps, craft felt for the ears or dino spikes or cotton if you can't find it, polymer clay if you're making a unicorn horn, cotton embroidery floss, a tiny paintbrush and white paint. I decided to make a cat ear hoodie, but I couldn't find the right color craft felt, so I made these cotton ones off screen. I'm using glue to glue the pinks to the main parts of the ear, and I would like to say that I fray checked all my cotton edges. Now, I almost always hand sew when I'm making doll clothes, so I'm always using this not to start my Hold thread. Hold your needle in one hand and pinch the end of your thread in the same hand. Wrap your thread around the needle five or six times. You should see all of your wraps on the end of your needle like this. Pinch the wraps between your finger and thumb and pull your needle and thread all the way through to the end. For step one, match the shoulder seams. Make sure when you match them that the armholes are together. I cannot tell you guys how many times I've accidentally sewn the front pieces on backwards. It is so frustrating. Always use a back stitch when hand sewing, especially with stretch fabrics. At the end of each seam, I like to place three little quick knots just for strength. After you've sewn both shoulder seams, it should look like this. For step two, take your arm cuffs and fold them in half lengthwise. Matching raw edges and with right sides together, place your cuffs on the ends of your sleeves, pin, and sew along here. Once you've sewn both cuffs to your sleeves, set those aside. If you're going to add a pocket, hem the diagonal edges. When you're done with your hem, you want to center the pocket on your hoodie. To do this, fold your hoodie in half and place a pin at the bottom on the wrong side in the center. Then on the hoodie front, place a pin at the bottom center on the right side. Place the pocket on the hoodie front and then turn it over so that the right sides are together and the bottom is pointed towards the neck. Carefully pick up your hoodie and pin the pocket to the hoodie front. I like to fold the corners over like this and catch them in my sewing so that I do not have to cut them off later. Once you've sewn your pocket on at the bottom, it'll be a weird flippy floppy bib hanging down like this. Fold the seam allowance over and turn your pocket up. Sometimes I find the fabric underneath the pocket is not going to behave itself and lay flat, so I like to hold it like this and place a pin across the middle. I like to place another pin going crosswise at the end of where I'm going to be sewing. For the top seam of the pocket, I'm going to use invisible stitching. You want to enter through the back of the work, through the front, without catching the pocket. You will then come straight across to the pocket and catch a little bit of fabric and pull that through. You're then going to go straight across and catch a little bit of fabric on the hoodie front. Continue back and forth across the seam line all the way to the end. Remember that smaller stitches are stronger. Once you reach the end, you are going to go straight through to the back and tie off and make your knot. Next, we are going to sew our sleeves into the armholes. You want to lay your sleeves across your hoodie pieces like this so that the right sides are together and the raw edges match. When you pin the sleeve into the armhole, you want to pin the ends and work towards the middle. The shoulder seam is not centered on the center of the sleeve. When you get to the shoulder seam, you want to pin the seam open so that it lays flat. When you are sewing the sleeve, it is a good idea to check on the back side to make sure you are not creating any puckers. Once your hoodie looks like this, we are going to set it aside. Take up your hood pieces, but wait! If you are making the dino hoodie, pin and sew the spikes on using a base stitch first. Now we can sew our hood pieces together. 
You want to match the curved edge of the hood and start pinning from the top and stop at X on the pattern. When you get to X in your sewing, I like to place three stitches one on top of the other to make strength because this spot will get a lot of stress as you work it over the doll. Now we are going to hem the rest of the hood on the curved seam. If you are making a dino hoodie, here's what that would look like. You are going to fold the seam allowance over and sew using a back stitch through the dino spikes. When you've hemmed one side, I like to stop here and do three little whip stitches over the top to create strength because this spot will receive a lot of stress. I know I already put three stitches in earlier, but well, you can't be too careful. When you've hemmed both sides, it should look like this. If you are adding ears, you should do that now. I measured about a centimeter and a half from the top center seam on the hood. When you pin right sides together, make sure that the pink part is up. When adding the other ear, try folding the hood in half to check the placement. Stitch the ears to the hood using a small running stitch. Now we can add the hood cuff. Take the cuff and fold it half lengthwise and then find the center of the cuff. This can be a little bit finicky, so work with it for a minute. Pin the center of the cuff to the center top seam on the hood and make sure that you pin that seam open so that it lays flat. Then match and pin the ends and place more pins between the ends and the center. Make sure you are matching all edges. Then sew. Once you finish your hood, we are going to attach it to the hoodie. This is the trickiest part of the pattern, so take your time. Take the left side of your hood and turn it down, matching the right sides together at the neck. You want to overlap the edge of the hoodie just barely past the center front. As you are pinning and sewing, make sure you don't stretch the fabric around the neck too much. Make sure when you pin the hood that you pin the seam of the hood cuff away from the front edge. Also, you want to pin the shoulder seam open just like you did when you added the sleeves. I'm sure you noticed this while you were pinning, but the back edge of the hood does not meet with the back edge of the hoodie. When I reach the edge of this seam, I like to throw in three stitches for strength because this spot will get a lot of stress as you work it over the doll. Now that you've got one side sewn on like this, we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. When you place the other side of your hood, please be very careful to overlap in the center front of the neck because if you don't, this will create a gap and that will cause the neck fabric to stretch. Now that you've gotten your hood sewn on, you will be able to turn it up and it will look like a hoodie. Now we are going to sew the side seams. Place a pin at the bottom, at the armhole seam, and at the end of the cuff. Place more pins, and then sew. Once you are finished sewing one side seam, go ahead and match the edges and sew the other. Turn your hoodie right side out. I like to use a tube turner to turn the sleeves, but you can definitely use your fingers or a straw. Now we're going to add the bottom cuff. Take your cuff and fold it in half lengthwise, wrong sides together. Find the center and match that to the center front on your hoodie. Place a pin, then place pins at the ends and along the rest of the cuff. And then sew. At the top of the center back, there is a raw edge along the neck where the hood did not meet with the jacket of the hoodie. I like to fold over and stitch these down. Now fold over, pin, and stitch down the right side of the center back. For the back closure, my favorite thing to use are these little snaps. You can use Velcro, but I sometimes find with stretch fabrics that pulling and pulling with Velcro can actually tear the fabric. Now comes the fun part, trying the hoodie on your doll. Thanks for volunteering, Jane. Now you can stop here, but I like to add cute little extra details to really make it look like a hoodie. I like to use Liquitex White Basics to paint tiny little circles at the base of the neck on the hood to mimic eyelets. I 
I then like to take a length of embroidery floss in a color that is similar to the color of the hoodie and I kind of twist both threads in the same direction and then together going in the opposite direction to make a sort of rope string thing. Anyway, I put it on a yarn needle to then feed it through the cuff of the hood. Then you just tie a little knot and trim the end of the cord off. To make a polymer clay unicorn horn, you just roll out a snake of polymer clay, pick it up by the middle, fold it in half and begin to twist it over itself. Go slow and try to keep the twist as even as possible. Then cut off and shape the bottom. After I baked my unicorn horn, I decided I didn't like how dull it was in comparison to my doll hoodie, which is, as you can see, very sparkly. So I put a dab of Fabri-Tac glue on the end of a popsicle stick and stuck the horn on there. I used Liquitex high gloss varnish and a soft brush to then glaze the outside of the horn. Yay, now it's shiny. Much better. You're, okay, cool. Now I'm gonna use a bit of sandpaper to sand the bottom of it to get a bit of tooth so that it sticks to the hoodie better. I then use a very tiny dot of Fabri-Tac that I spread on the bottom with a toothpick because I don't like to see glue on dolls. I'm okay with using it, but I mean, we're not gluing clouds to the sky. You just need a little bit. It's pretty. It was shiny. Ooh, look at the way the light's hitting it. Ooh! Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed sewing with me. This pattern is available for sale in my Etsy shop, which I will link in the description below. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram so you guys don't miss anything. As always, your ongoing love and support really means the world to me. See you in the Dollverse!